Magandang araw po sa inyong lahat. Thank you for this opportunity to be part of this ka- online career orientation for senior students, graduating students, and graduates of the College of Agriculture. I want to thank the Philippine Society of Animal Nutritionists for partnering with Central Luzon State University to make this activity possible. To the students, organizers, faculty, and members of the Philippine Society of Animal Nutritionists, magandang umaga pong muli sa inyong lahat. My presentation has three parts. First is the personal story. Second is three tips in entering the professional world after college. And the third and the last part is the sales and marketing career opportunities for agricultural professionals. And before sharing some practical tips in entering the professional world, and pursuing marketing careers in the agriculture industry, let me share my story as a former student of a state university. Like most of us here, how I finished studying and my life after college. I came from a humble family of nine members. I have five elder brothers, a sister, my father who is a farmer, and my mother who is a micro-entrepreneur who buys barbecue sticks in our local community and sells it in Metro Manila. I grew up in a family which struggles to make ends meet. Yet despite all these struggles, my mother always tells us to finish our studies so we will not experience the hardship that they experience because they failed to complete theirs. When I was a child, I can remember that an angry woman came into our house looking for my mother who owes her a sum of money and she is humiliating my mother to force her to pay. It was the moment when I told myself that I would do everything to be successful. And I will make my mother proud of me. I dreamt of a moment when my parents can pay all our debts. Most of my classmates enrolled in nursing courses because that was the most in-demand career at that time. But God gave me the wisdom about the law of supply and demand. So I told myself if all of them are nurses, I might as well look for another course with low quantity of professionals so I can be in demand when I graduate. So I enrolled under BS Agriculture since my father is a farmer, so agriculture is close to my heart. And I know the struggles of the agri-based family and the feeling of being a farmer. When I was still studying every week is a struggle. When the demand for barbecue sticks in Pasay is high, my mother can support my weekly allowance. On the other hand, when barbecue stick sales are low, I have to find ways to borrow money from kind neighbors. Tirador din ako ng mga scholarships. From university, if you have high grades, you have discounts sa matriculation. From the office of the governor, office of the vice governor, office of the congressman, and some private donors of scholarship. I will keep the money from the supporters so I can use it when the barbecue sales are low. There are times when I decided to stop studying because I know that my parents have hard time financing my studies. But my parents did everything to support me so I can finish. True enough, by the grace of God, I finished my degree with honors. Not that I want to have the title, but because I can only continue studying if my grades are high because I can ask the financial support from several people that I can use during difficult times. By the way, I also sell prepaid loads to my classmates and dorm mates to augment my allowance. I also work part-time to supervise a zoo near Tagaytay City to support myself. During my practicum defense, I told the panel of my advisors that I am working in a theme park with 200 pesos day salary to support my stay in the university. During this time, Do- Dr. Andrew Bunan, one of my professors, got the idea to introduce me to his clients, Dr. Lorenzo, the president and the owner of a striving company, East Asia Veterinary Products Incorporated. The wife of Dr. Andrew Bunan, Ma'am Andre Lu, trained me as an animal nutritionist. Few days after graduation, I was interviewed by the company president for an animal nutritionist position and I was hired. I can still remember that the night before that interview, I prayed to God that may I find a job 
where I can have weekends to serve in a ministry in my previous local church in Cavite and 8,000 peso salary. And during the interview, the owner told me that they have a new policy, that there is a no work during weekends, no answered prayer. And my salary, I can remember that my first salary is 10,000 pesos. And I was so happy that that time, since my soon-to-be salary is 2,000 pesos higher than what I prayed for. Here are my three tips in entering the professional world after college. First, be true to yourself. I know that you hear this all the time, but don't pretend to be someone else during job interviews. You have to act natural, but be appropriate and respectful. The interviewer will observe many things about you. Are you rumbling and avoiding eye contact, which may be perceived as lack of sincerity? Be honest if you don't know the answer to the question. Don't talk about things you don't know anything about. Never claim that you have a particular skill that you don't have, nor exaggerate your experiences. Before you can bring yourself to the professional world, you need to understand who you are. This is where self-awareness comes in. Self-awareness is a critical component of being emotionally intelligent. The capacity to be aware of, control, and express one's emotion, and to handle interpersonal relationship empathically. Self-awareness is all about knowing your, yourself, your personality, your strength, and your weaknesses. I highly suggest that you conduct a personal SWOT analysis to have a visual representation of yourself. Just be yourself. Don't pretend to be someone you are not. People trust you when you are authentic, not a replica of someone else. Second, tell your story. The most common interview question is tell me about yourself. Yun yung isa sa pinaka-common talaga na tinatanong, tell me about yourself. Typically, applicants talk about their jobs, how they started, their school, and many things that are already written in their resume. The most effective thing you can do in an interview is to make your experience come alive through stories or examples. It would help if you also ask right questions, do follow-ups and clarifications during your interview. However, Telling a good story is the most effective way to stand out among other applicants. This is because our brains are wired to remember the emotion, examples, and images conveyed in a good story. You have to make sure you know the audience. The most compelling stories are those that are made for a specific audience. So, you make sure you know, that you research and learn about the company and determine the elements in your story that is relevant to your audience. Don't forget to practice and speak in the language that you are most comfortable. A novelist named John Barth wrote that the story of your life is not your life. It is your story. It means that what matters is your narrative. It is how you tell the story, not the mere fact of your life. Tell your story in such a way that describes a transformative effect of a specific challenge or difficulty in your life, then use that story to highlight the skills, goals, and accomplishments or inspiration that you want to convey to your audience. And the third tip is to make the most of your first job. Something I learned from my parents is to take the first job offered to me after college so that I'll have more opportunities afterward. It might sound superstitious, but there is plenty of wisdom in that advice. The first job is an extension of our learning experience. In hiring a fresh graduate, the company benefits less with the contribution of a new graduate. They can operate even without the newly graduate considering that they don't have any professional experience. I know it is hard to hear with our ego, but that is the truth. The company is paying us to learn. We have to take all opportunities given to us to learn new things that are not taught in the university and always go the extra mile. Never deliver a so-so output. Do not think 
that because others are being paid more than you do, it can be a license to exert the minimum creativity, effort, and quality of work for the job. Most uh, young adults or millennials feel that if they do more than the minimum required for their salary, the company takes advantage of their lack of experience. However, the reality is the more you put into your first job or entry position, the more experience, the more knowledge that you will acquire that you can carry to your next job or career. If you go the extra mile or be the bibo kid ng taon, you might get an early promotion. Always volunteer for additional duties. Ask your boss question on how you can contribute more. Then take the free seminars and webinars. You are helping yourself more than you help the company if you do these things. Think of your first job as an extension of your college learning. When you work as a fresh grad, whether in the academe, in research, or as an entrepreneur or techno-commercial, the company is paying you to learn. Remember that. And if you have this mindset, you will find yourself ahead of your generation in just few years. Now, let us go to the third and the last part of this presentation. The sales and marketing career opportunities for agricultural professionals. Here is a story when I'm still studying in Los Baños. There was a vacancy as a UP professor for animal science because some professors are already retiring. Most of my classmates know about the vacancy, but no one from them informed me about it. So I only knew it from one of the professors and she told me that most of my friends knew it. So I confronted my classmates about it, why they didn't tell me about the job opening at the university. They said that my personality and interest are not for that position, so they didn't bother to tell me about it. My point is, there are skill sets, personalities, interests, and strengths that may fit a specific type of profession. Although we don't want to limit other people, the reality is we may perform better if we pursue things that fit us. So now, imagine that you have several career op options in front of you academe, research, techno-commercial, or entrepreneurship. How will you know that you are for techno-commercial career paths? According to Forbes.com, here are some signs you should think about a sales-related career. First, is you like to listen to people and they find it easy to talk to you. You remember details about people you've met. Second is you like to design solutions for problems that you your friends or your family are facing. And the third is you want to get stronger as a business person. You can learn a lot in business if you have sales experience. If you can imagine yourself in a sales position, that's fine. But keep in mind that anytime you learn, practice, observe, or participate in sales activity, it's in your best interest to do it. Selling or marketing is not bad. It adds value to others by offering them things that may save them money, solve their problems, or help them achieve their goals. Likewise, selling is not a bad thing. It is helping other people with your products and services. We are all salespeople in one way or another, and the bigger your dreams, the bigger the selling muscles that you will be needing for you to succeed. And here are the common tech commercial careers that I know. First is agricultural sales professional. There are technical sales representative positions that might be attractive to you. However, it depends on your personality and career goals. Working in agricultural sales, you will sell feed additives, you know, animal feed, fertilizers, and farm inputs. It depends on the company that you are working for. You will be expected to be an expert in your product and often advise feed mill operators, farm managers, and farm owners on products. You will need to listen to their needs and then recommend the correct products to suit their requirements. The ability to build long relationships and be persuasive and knowledgeable about your product are all skills that are vital in this career. Sales and marketing degrees 
would be extremely valuable if you're looking to pursue a career in sales. Before COVID, agricultural professionals with, uh, with rela sales-related functions are provided with service vehicles, allowances, commissions, and incentives. And the second position is marketing support. This position is rare, but when agricultural professionals are tasked to do pure marketing for agricultural products, they have to create marketing and promotional strategies to sell the products. They may also create promotional materials, manage social media, and organize events meant to attract clients. Marketing is crucial component of a successful business. There are different definitions of marketing. The standard explanation that I know is marketing are activities through which goods and services move from concept to the customer. It accomplishes the organization's objectives by anticipating and understanding the customer's behavior and needs. We are usually taught to understand the animals and interpret the animal's condition based on physical characteristics, chemical analysis, performance metrics, trials, and concept. But in marketing, it is very different. Here, the most important is you understand the customer behavior and needs. It involves cultivating the relationship with the customer by adding value to the goods and services being offered. If you are interested in this kind of career, you might want to consider taking courses or trainings on marketing and business. For me, marketing requires a kind of skill set that is not usually taught in agricultural schools. However, we don't want to limit ourselves. You can learn a lot from the things around you. Everything is now digital. It is up to you how you will use the massive information in front of you. The perks of this position is that you can practice your creativity, analytical skills, you'll meet people from different disciplines and industries. Position, and the third position that I know is technical sales professionals. Techno-commercial career in agriculture or animal industry are those jobs that have marketing or sales functions. These positions are often the key point of contact for clients answering queries, providing technical advice, and demonstrating how to use the company's new products and services. In addition, these professionals provide pre-sale and post-sale support. They also negotiate prices, negotiate contract terms and conditions, and reviewing the cost and sales performance of the company or department. In my experiences, I had the chance to coordinate with foreign suppliers concerning the importation and technical details, develop marketing plans and strategies for nutritional products, monitor product inventory to assure availability and appropriate importation schedules, and execute corresponding adjustments on feeds and feeding. The perks of this uh, career, pre-COVID, technical sales professionals got the chance to travel abroad, attend lots of seminars and learnings, you will meet a lot of people around the world. You can practice your technical background while taking responsibilities for the business aspect of the company. And for the wrap up, I want you to remember these things. My three tips are being yourself, telling a compelling story, and making the most out of your first job. There is an exciting life after college. There are many opportunities, but remember that life is not easy. Life is a continuous process of ups and downs. Life is not a straight line leading from one blessing to the next, and then finally you'll be successful. Instead, life is a winding and troubled road, switchback after switchback. Our God is plotting the course and managing the troubles with far-reaching purposes for our good and for the glory of Jesus Christ. He orchestrates everything to bring us to places where we can make a difference. Nevertheless, people and problems will continuously challenge and test us. But in Galatians chapter 6, verse 9, it is said that let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we will not give up. Here's my favorite verse when I'm in college. 2 Samuel chapter 22, verse 23. 
God is my strength and power and He makes my way perfect. You and all of those graduates this year may be in an uncertain situation because of the pandemic. You may be experiencing lots of challenges and difficulties in life. Be courageous. It is okay to fail and it's okay to start from nothing. Maya Angelou said that you may encounter many defeats but you must not be defeated. It may be necessary to encounter the defeats so you can know who you are, what you can rise from and how you can still come out of it. It is said in Luke chapter 21 verse 19, Stand firm and you will win in life. Maraming maraming salamat po and I hope na may natutunan po kayo sa mga sinir ko po for this uh, seminar. Maraming pong salamat.